Consider when you change rooms in a video game. In Unity, you often accomplish this by changing scenes. This causes everything from the original scene to be destroyed and the new scene to be loaded. For puzzle games, this idea works out really well. Each room is uniquely set up and has the same systems and mechanics available. Additionally, the puzzle levels are often episodic. One puzzle won't affect another, and therefore very little data needs to be preserved between scenes. However, this can cause problems for anything we want to keep persistent. Often, the player wants to maintain momentum or animation frames between scenes. If the new scene creates a new version of the player, this information is lost. A common way to fix this issue is to use don't destroy on load on any game object we need to preserve. We can add a line to stop duplicates and we get what I call a unity singleton. This solution, however, isn't perfect. To make sure these objects are in the game regardless of the scene we start from, every scene needs to contain each of them. This can cause human error and bloating, as well as extraneous computations at the start of each scene when creating and deleting objects that we never needed to begin with. That makes two problems to solve. How do we ensure essential game objects are set up regardless of the scene we launch first? And how do we maintain the state of game objects between levels? If you're new here, I'm Riley Shaw, and I've been revitalizing an old game jam project called Lorelock. This is episode one of development, and it's gonna get a bit technical, but if you want a little bit more history and some gameplay elements, you can go back and check out episode zero. But for now, let's talk about how the lore lock sets up game and scene behaviors. Our first secret weapon is the runtime initialize on load tag. This allows us to write a function that is called when the game is loaded. We can use this to load any required resources once and give them all persistence. In the editor, this will get called regardless of which scene you load first. This way we can ensure that anything we need in every scene will always be there. We still need to be careful since the overlap between each scene is lessened when you consider that we have a main menu scene too. What we can say is that every level will have more things that it shares, namely the lore lock themselves, but also some game scene behaviors and potentially even more. If we only have one part that needs to change, namely the level itself, then we can just change the contents dynamically and leave all the persistent aspects alone. Now every room will have a player and game scene behavior, but we only need to set it up once. This is the current setup I've come up with and I'm sure it'll have improvements as we go. The main goal is that we have room to grow. This approach is actually somewhat similar to the original Game Jam version, where everything was just a single scene, but the levels were independent. This wasn't necessarily the most sustainable because so many rooms would cause you to move a lot every single time something changed. And as the scene gets bigger, it could have begun restricting players to ones with stronger computers. There were also issues enabling and disabling colliders, which you'll no longer have to deal with. Thank you so much for the support of the first video. I was absolutely blown away. We got a thousand views in less than a week and we continued to get so many more after that. Uh, I'm very surprised and I really appreciate it. I'm glad it was received well because I had a lot of fun coming up with it and I really wanna share more of this game as it progresses. Once again, I'm gonna say that you should definitely check out the channel Artificial. I'll put a link in the description. A lot of the tips and tricks that I've learned for architecture were actually investigating some points that they brought up in one of their own videos. If you're interested in more of this educational style stuff, then I would really suggest it. Additionally, you're gonna to have to let me know if you liked this style of video more. I know it was shorter, but it actually took a lot longer to produce and it's a little bit more educational. I'm not sure what I'm gonna be working on next for the game, but I'm gonna to try to choose something that will have more gameplay to show off so that hopefully we can get a little bit more of that traditional devlog feel. If you want some more explanations, let me know. Uh, we can do both or we can just switch uh, over to whichever one, whatever you guys want. So yeah, I'll definitely see you then.